Oh my goodness. We have Amanda Huff in the house. Hi. Hi. Thanks so much wow. for joining us. Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm so excited to have you here today with us. You have such a prolific background working on different projects, writing music for film, working on many genres from jazz to trip hop to dark pop, and the list goes on. Uh, and Tariq, I love Tariq always likes to call you the Bjork of Milwaukee, which I don't think he's too far off. You played one of the last physical shows, in fact, that I've seen, and I'm sure a lot of people have seen you live or noticed that you have an incredible range. And it's a burning question for me. I need to know the story of your voice. Did you discover your range? Did you work on it? Because it's one of the most unique voices I think I've heard. Um, so my, my range um, really just came from like singing in the shower um, and in the car. I, I don't know. I, I didn't really grow up with a musical background and any time that I would try to enter into one of those things, they kind of pigeonholed me into like trying to sing softly or pretty. And so I just figured the best way to reject that was to keep trying to make the, the worst sounds possible um, or the ones that weren't allowed until I could fine tune them and make them, you know, something that was part of my arsenal. So, um, yeah, <laughs> stubbornness, bitterness, uh, I don't know, spite. Almost curiosity too, really. And and not a lot of people think that way, you know? So that's yeah. an advantage. It was, it's really exciting. The, um, like, uh, the jazz group that I play with, Strangelander, we have a lot of room for, um, to, wow, um, improvisation, yes. <laughs> And I don't really know anything about jazz anyhow, so everything kind of has to be like whatever. So I'll play games where I just, you know, during a set will try to hit a note higher than I hit the last time or like even think of a note that's higher and just, just go for it because um, there really aren't too many wrong notes in jazz. I've learned that. Um, <laughs> that's, yeah, so just, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, I'm, I'm so glad to have you here. I know you've been so busy uh, on the front lines, being an ally and an advocate for social change here in the city. I wanted to ask, what has that experience been like and being part of such, such a big community, what do you hope for the city of Milwaukee? Um, you know what, I think it's an interesting, interesting time. It, it, it already was, honestly. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna pretend like Milwaukee was just, uh, <laughs> broken or the U.S. wasn't or anything at all, um, but really understanding the power of my platform has been a big deal. Like, how am I utilizing it both to um, speak to empower others and to give space for, for others? Like, um, when is it my turn to step back or to use it to bolster others that might not be getting... Um, the, the audience that I think that they rightfully deserve. Um, I, God, I did so much. I, yeah. I think just like all you can do is, is keep paying attention to whose voices need to be elevated um, and make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're protecting the, the energy and supporting businesses, not through just like donation, but actually like purchases <laughs> um I, I don't know I'm sorry <laughs> no it's a it's a big no, question so, and, and I think what you're saying is important all of all of those things are absolutely yeah I I agree with you <laughs> yeah and I like it's good to be out in the protests so that when you're educating others you can say like I was there I saw this or I'm you know a, a shield for for people you yeah. know you're supposed to be protecting yeah. it. And these are wild times. And I mean, I feel like I've seen these are wild times and you've been keeping pretty busy sorry. currently. Oh, sorry. What's that? Oh, you just cut out for a second. Oh, okay. Let me, let me try again. Well, <laughs> <laughs> this is, see, and this is part of it. These are these wild times where digital is, everything's a little different. And I feel like you've been keeping really busy during these times. And I know you're working on your sophomore album, Simulate, which is aimed to be released this winter. How, how has that process been creating in quarantine? I love it. <laughs> I love it. I've, um, at the start of quarantine, decided like, okay, you know what? Um, 
I really love working with other producers and I'm sick of, um, you know, having a really terrible garage band that was outdated. So I'm going to um, educate myself and buy logic and see, you know, how I can establish myself as a producer, not only to further like how I could communicate, communicate with others um, when I did collaborate and, but how could I like, um, preserve my voice if I were making this secondary project. I think like the first, my debut album was like a huge step for me in getting the courage to start talking about what my musical identity was, but now is the time to take everything that I've learned and actually show something for it. And I think like the more that you spread out having other people work on your projects, depending on what the context is or the content, um, you end up distilling the message. So it is important for me to have that language through not only my voice and my lyrics, but in the, the production aspect too. Absolutely. And I like to hear that advantage. Like there are advantages in, in some respects in education and like working on your craft is like a really big one. I'm really excited to hear what's to come of it. And I know we're going to be hearing a song. Is it off of this record? Yeah, it's going to be. It's it's not finished um, yet. The, the one that I did the live performance uh, isn't quite finished yet, but it was um, it was performance ready and I was just I was very excited to share something you know can I'm you tell very us a bit about it huh oh can you tell us a bit about it like or like the concept or and I know this is like your own your own production work which is what you've been working towards <laughs> yeah it's kind of exciting uh you know I can just if I want a timpani or a Gregorian chant or something I can just <laughs> there's no rules <laughs> um, but yeah so this song I wrote towards the very beginning of quarantine. Um, and I was going through a lot of big personal changes um, in terms of like who was the central part of my life and um, what it meant to now have to communicate just uh, pretty much exclusively through the internet. Um, and it was this was that combination of trying to make peace with loneliness and whether um, the the virtual distance could be enough to satisfy like this new space that I was breaching. So yeah, I, it was originally like called Torrent Your Love, but I thought that was a little like, a little cheesy. I mean, I, I don't, Torrent is still a cheesy name, but <laughs> um, I, I, I'm very interested in, in how we can communicate humanity through yeah virtual spaces so a lot of simulate in general's dealing about that i'm excited to share that song but we're also i wanted to, we're also going to get a digital premiere of the insanely cinematic music video for division is there anything you can tell us before we dive into this video yeah so <laughs> i've been waiting for a while to actually put this online. I mean, it was in the film festival um, this past year, and it was also at like a little premiere at St. Kate's, but um, yeah, I've been sitting on it for a while. It was directed by my friend Marty, who was uh, actually married to KP, who did my first music video. So I kind of had, you know, power couple there <laughs> who I get to work with. Um, and, uh, the song itself was with William Gardner, who um, has, especially during quarantine, become like one of my new partners in crime. We're probably, uh, I mean, no, uh, we've got a project together in the works that's like actually going to be the next step from this. This was like stage two and like a, can we work together? Yes, we can um, type thing. So I think this is like a, a nice, Oh, God, I'm sorry. I ramble so much. I'm like, no. You're um, great. Yeah, this is going to be a turning point in a lot of things, both like artistic direction, the team that I've started forming that I um, feel immensely proud and excited to, to have, um, and just musical direction in general is uh, definitely that sort of shift in aesthetic. 
I'm so excited to share it. And before we dive in, how can our listeners support you? Um, man, I think like, I want to say, yeah, buy the stuff off my band camp and whatever, but uh, really like I've just been donating that money. So just like put that towards the community. I think I really resonated with what classic was saying with that, you know, right now my focus is more on, um, whether the community around me is thriving so that there is the future that we want, um, to come back into. Um, and I think like just, um, you can also support me by engaging in conversations about mental health. I think like simulate and division specifically the song this video is about is very heavily about mental health and, um, just these horrible, uncomfortable spaces that we get steeped in. And the only way to make that easier to traverse is to um, normalize vulnerability um, and learn how to be there for one another because everybody has different modes of communication. Absolutely. And that feeds into community. That's so beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Amanda Huff, for joining us. Thank you for having me so much. <laughs> Yay. 